guys. My name is Bryant, uh, also known as that journaling guy, um, and welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about an app that I recently found, and I think it was released not too long ago, that I highly enjoy and recommend. It is, it is a really cool app. So since the whole planning thing started, I've always been an advocate of like digital and analog planning. I think both of them have their places. And I think both of them have their pros and cons. This is a perfect example of how digital can feel analog, I guess you could say. So today I'm talking about the Zinnia app, the Zinnia Planner app exclusively on the iPad Apple store. On the, exclusively on the Apple store, exclusively on the I, Apple store for iPad. So you can't get it on your phone, you can't get it on Android yet. You possibly could, I don't know if you ever will be able to, but it's exclusively on the iPad. So there is a lot to talk about on this app and quite frankly, it's deceptively simple. Before we go into the app, um, these are the, the things that we're gonna cover uh, and we're gonna review as an app. So we're gonna talk about basic functionality. We're gonna talk about the audience that the, the app is catering to or aiming for the visual design of the app then we're going to talk about the ease of use so those are the things that that we're going to talk about uh when discussing the zinnia app but first we're going to go through the app and show you a little bit of a tour of what the app has to offer so when you open up the app you are going to be greeted by the quick start guide you can make your new journal and i'm going to go through a couple things before we go into a mock-up bullet journal that i made for june so i made a journal that essentially would mimic the one i had in real life kind of have all the features and all the things that i wanted with using only the resources found within the app. I didn't draw anything. I didn't import any assets. I made it completely with everything that's featured within the app. So you open up the app, it's the journals, then you see the studio. So when you go through the studio, the cool thing about the studio is that not only do you see all the assets and features for the app, but they actually include little blog posts that explain how to use the app, uh, productivity tips, um, like creator spotlights. It's really, really cool. Let's start. We got the note taking uh, tips. Tells you how to take better notes, how you can use their icons, how you can use their features. We even got Black Lives Matter and Pride content. Very, very cool for the app. Then the featured artist, which was Amy Tangerine. And so like they have these artists that actually create like sticker packs and assets for the app that if you have the subscription or you've paid for, you have access to for your planners and for your journals. Um, every month they always add a few new goodies, whether it be sticker packs or uh, like borders, sometimes even planners, really nice. But if you go all the way to the bottom, that's when you see all the things that you have. Now, in the studio, when you create a new journal or a new planner, you actually have the ability to just create entire planners, like with um, spreads and with uh, completely filled journals. So you don't have to build it from scratch if you don't want to. So let's say we want a minimalist planner. You've got your dates, you've got your goals, you've got how you can plan everything, you got your to-dos, and you have your tracker. Minimalist, it's effective, and it does what it has to do, right? But if you decide you want to start from scratch, like probably most of you will, these are the assets that you have to create your vision of what you want your journal to look like. So you have full-blown text, anything from calligraphy um, to different types of type fonts, um, all kinds of like handwritten fonts. Literally, it, it's too much to even go into to explain. These are exactly the type of fonts people want to be able to do in real life. They practice to do. They have digital washi tape, like digital washi tape. What? What is even digital washi tape? Oh, look at this. Look at the, yo. I when I saw this when I started using the app, I was like, this, this is it. This is this is the merge that I was looking for between analog and digital. And it was like a superpower. It's like. Whoosh, you know, they were like coming together. It was like in Dragon Ball Z when they 
when they like came together and did their thing. So this is an example of a bullet journal that I would use in real life. Um, and it includes all the things that I would want in a productivity journal. Here is my June bullet journal. So I, like I said in the beginning, everything that I have included here in this bullet journal are assets that are found within the app. So Zinnia includes these when you have um, access to the studio. So all this font, I didn't do myself. The cool thing is that let's say you selected the font that you wanted to type in, you click here and you can actually type in that font for whatever day that you wanted to do or whatever you're doing. But that doesn't take away from the fact that you can write. So you have the edit button, and if you decide that you want to write the same way that you know, you would in a regular analog journal or even a digital planner, you can do that too. But I know there's a lot of people that want a certain aesthetic, and this is the cleanest way to get that aesthetic, I'm not gonna lie. Like if it ever comes down to like you having to draw things personally and then having something achieve that aesthetic, it, it just makes it a little bit more accessible for people who don't have that artistic ability um that we see in bullet journals nowadays honestly it's it's a reality of the community you just have very artistic people doing these amazing bullet journals and sometimes unfortunately that does kind of turn people off from bullet journaling they think that when they create a bullet journal it needs to be amazing it needs to be like fucking phenomenal or they're not doing it right, which is completely not true. Now the Zinnia app lets you be that artistic without needing to be that artistic. They have stickers, they have um, fonts, they have everything that is that you would need at your disposal to mimic an aesthetic that you want to create. So like this little relaxed thing, you can lock in a place, you can unlock it, doesn't move. I just copy and pasted it from here. So I would have my monthly planner with my task and highlights. Here I have my notes for the month that I would do include in my regular monthly video projects and my digital washi tape right at the bottom, which still. Um, my video projects, I have my sleep tracker. I did write in the days just because, I don't know, I just thought it would be a little bit easier. My habit tracker. That includes my habits and monthly expenses. I also am a huge advocate for one sentence a day. I think it's good for your mental health. It's a good way to document what you've done in your month without having to take the time to sit down and journal every event or moment of that month. So this is the um, mock-up journal, bullet journal that I created that would essentially mimic a journal I would use in real life. It's simple, it's nice, it's an aesthetic that I enjoy, and it's exactly what I, I would want to do with my physical bullet journal. You have access to the studio within the, the journaling tab. Here you have your templates, you have your stickers, and stickers, I'm a huge, like I, I love stickers. I think stickers give you the ability to be as creative as you want at a, a convenient, in a convenient way. Stickers are the way to go sometimes. I honestly wish I would use more stickers sometimes in mine, you know, but I kept my June bullet journal black and white. Like all these colors are super nice, but that's just not how I would actually make my bullet journal super colorful. Not really the look that I go for, but it really is as easy as resyncing, like, you know, resizing, twisting and turning and pasting. It's that easy. Here, let's say, uh, let's get out of the stickers. Let's go to some text. Let's go to the month. Um, I like this brushed look. We're gonna go to April, make it a little bit bigger, stick it right there. We have an April cover page. We could even stick in front a few stickers. Let's do, let's go for like a nice, ooh, I don't know, like a roaring 20s kind of vibe, you know, newspaper kind of thing. Here, delete that pink delete that pink and now we have all maybe like a lookbook for april you know like a 1920s lookbook that we want to create that aesthetic bam a little bit over a little bit over boom you know bam and that looks really cool 
Now, how long would that take you in real life? I'm, I'm advocating for this app because it is so convenient and it's so cool. It, it's fast, it's awesome, it works super well. Since I've started using it, I haven't had any trouble with like bugs, um, like app breaking bugs. I haven't had the app crash on me yet, fortunately. And so far, everything just seems so user friendly. But the stickers are one of my favorite things. You have the text, you have writables. Yeah, so the people who made this app definitely had the community in mind and are definitely from the community because they included something that most digital planners don't. And I'm about to show you what. Go scroll all the way down from the templates. Trackers. They include templates for trackers in a like a journaling app, that's awesome. They have things like financial trackers, gratitude trackers, gratitude trackers, habit trackers, health and fitness, meal, mood trackers, like mood gratitude trackers. Like you, you would absolutely have to know that you're catering to the stationary like bullet journaling community to include those. Like that makes me so happy, you don't understand. That is spectacular. This is like having Etsy, all the printables that you see on Etsy at your fingertips. It, it really is that crazy. Water trackers, like to do, let's look at some one of these like mood trackers. This is like kind of gemstone mood tracker. Boom, snaps to the page. Done, let's go to the next page. Oh, uh, this was my weeklies, by the way. That was just an empty page that I had. New page, still has the same layout. Let's do a habit tracker. Boom, snaps to the page. All the blue that you see is text that is ed like editable. You can edit the text and make it look whatever font you want to use. So that is really cool. Another nice feature is that when you're done with this, let's say you've already finished your bullet journal, um, you want to export it as a PDF. You can do that in case you want to open it in something like Notability or GoodNotes because GoodNotes is another app that people in the community often use to use their digital bullet journal, to host their digital bullet journal. And I'll have a whole like tutorial on how to make a Buju using uh, GoodNotes, but that's at a later time. This is what we've got so far. You saw how easy it was. You saw how intuitive it was. That's our April kind of look, but let's, let's sit down and actually talk about a few things. All right, so now we can start talking about the app itself and how it's built. So we're gonna start with basic functionality. As of May 2020 into June 2020, the app works fantastically. I've been fortunate enough not to run into any bugs or any crashes when using it for extended periods of time. Um, extended periods of time, I mean like hours at a time, just exploring, uh, making different journals and stuff like that, absolutely no problems. Yeah, so the app is very responsive. It's very snappy. Anything that needs to be editable, just T, everything is already highlighted. Click on it, type whatever you need to type in. Hey, done. Edited, goes right back into place where it needed to be. I mean, obviously you change the font size, but it's really that easy. It's that snappy. Zoom, pinch, flick, anything that you need. Very, very snappy. No noticeable lag, to be honest. And you can just keep flicking and you're good to go. Let's talk a little bit about the audience. The audience is something that I've kind of already talked about here because it's just very obvious. Whoever made this app is obviously part of the planning community. There's no doubt about it. There's things included in here that you would have to just be a part of that ecosystem to understand and to know. In my opinion, things like mood trackers and like gratitude trackers are things that are exclusive almost exclusive to kind of journaling in general. Um, they're definitely aiming for the people who use analog systems and are looking to move on to digital or want the convenience of digital because you can always have your iPad. I know you can always have your notebook, but not to this capacity. You could have all your notebooks on your iPad, you know? Well, the whole like digital analog, we'll get into that argument another day, but they absolutely know who they're going for, and I think they hit the mark right on. 
I think it was spot on who they were going for. And as somebody who loves bullet journaling, I think they did a fantastic job trying to accommodate the transition between analog and digital. And I'm, I'm ecstatic with the app. Now let's talk a little bit about the visual design. Like I said, here, when you first open up the app, this is literally the screen that you open up to. App, like, open up to. I'm not kidding. Here's the Zinnia. Ooh, open. I'll even close it. Close it. Open up the app. Zinnia. Literally, it opens up just to your journal. So it's like a shelf of all your planners and journals that you have. It is deceptively minimalistic. It is very deceptive how minimal the design is. There's two tabs that's it there's the journals and the studio but it is clean and like i said it's responsive and i've been lucky enough that i haven't seen any ads running um like obviously i'm in the paid uh paid tier but it's just straight to the point it, visually it's just simple you're here to do what you're here to do you know you're here to journal cool click your journal edit your journal you even see your pages it's clean it's minimal, it's distraction free, which I think a lot of planning apps don't do well, is the fact that they're distraction free. They're trying to bring in all the colors, they're trying to give you all these features that just don't go well with the idea of trying to be productive. Straight to the point, visually very well done. Now, ease of use. Now, ease of use is just how intuitive everything is. How I, like I just said, <laughs> everything's in big, bold letters. Everything is typed out for you. Everything has um, like direction, self-explanatory. It's very user-friendly. It's intuitive into what you're looking for. Creating a new journal, cool. Let's start with the basic page. Uh, five options to create the page. Let's do dot, let's pick purple, continue. And it created my journal. There it is. It just makes sense. It's easy to use, even for somebody who's not too tech savvy. Pick it up. You know where it says create a journal. Pick your preference. You've created your first journal. It's that easy. If you compare this to something like creating a digital bullet journal using GoodNotes, where you have to use like the slides and stuff, ooh, you are in for a surprise because it is painful. Now, that's not to say that this app is perfect. Unfortunately, there, there are a few things that just, they could have done a little bit better. Like the idea that the free, freemium tier is, that's what it is. Um, you get three journals with three pages each. That's, you can't do anything. At that point, the app is not functional. So it's like a little teaser into what you could potentially do, but not enough for somebody to want to use the app, like genuinely use the free version of the app. I don't, I don't think it was well done. I felt like it was more of a um, promotion to their paid tier. $9.99 is a little steep for something like this. Like, I understand that you know you got to pay the bills and like business models these days are all based on subscriptions but 9.99 is still a lot at this point it's obvious how i feel about the app the app like zinnia is right now the planner app that you should have for the ipad without a doubt it's deeply customizable it's very user friendly for somebody who's not even tech savvy it's affordable I just wish it was more affordable and it just allows its users to be as creative or as minimal as they would like in a convenient time frame so you can make your journal look spectacular i made my boot june like journal i did all of this in less than half an hour using only the assets within within zinnia yeah so it's easy it's convenient it's it's really nice and honestly this is probably it sucks that this is the first app that i'm reviewing for the channel because it's really good it's really well done um well that's my review of the zinnia app uh, if you have any questions definitely 
let me know down below. If you use this app, I'd love to know how you use it and what you use it for. Did you like my review? Did I explain enough? Hopefully I did. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, and leave a thumbs up. My name is That Journaling Guy. You can find me on Instagram where I post all my personal spreads and cover pages on my actual bullet journal. But I really appreciate you guys sticking this far, and I'll see you in the next one.